Demographers point to the difficulty of achieving work-family life balance as one of the reasons Canadians are choosing to have fewer or even no children. Joining us now for more on what governments and policymakers can do to encourage population growth in London, Ontario, Roderick Bojo, Professor Emeritus of Sociology at Western University. And Roderick, we're happy to welcome you to the program tonight. I want to start by setting up a graph for you to essentially explain the significance of but Sheldon, if you would, let's put this graph up right now. This is StatsCan Age Structure Pyramid, and we'll take our time here and go through this. Men on the left, women on the right. You see the age ascending in the middle. We have three different things that we're measuring here, the sort of blue ocean-like swath, our numbers from 2009. Then the next line out, our projections into the future, the blue line for 2036. And then the next line out, even beyond that, are projections for 2061. And perhaps you can tell us, as we, as we see, uh, the older you get, the closer together the lines get. And about the mid-40s is where the lines are at their widest. Explain, if you would, for us, Roderick, the significance of what we're seeing right now. Yes, this is called an age pyramid. And it um, has a fairly different shape, uh, depending on especially the level of fertility and mortality in a given population. Uh, I think what we're seeing, is like in 2009 there, is the baby boom uh, is aged uh, probably, uh, by now it's uh, aged 50 to 70. Uh, so in 2009 it would be uh, uh, about uh, 45 to, um, uh, to 65. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, an important element of the, of the population. Also, over time, uh, the, the, uh, the top part becomes larger relative to the bottom part, that, or the average age of the population goes up, or there's a higher proportion of people at ages of 65 and over or 85 and over. So the bottom line is we are heading for a fertility rate that is less today, uh, that, excuse me, will be less in the future than what it is today, and I want to get a better understanding of what the consequences of a lower fertility rate going forward will be for Canada? Well, it's, uh, the fertility rate has been fairly constant, fa fairly stable in the range of uh, 1.5 to 1.7 births per woman uh, for the last 25 years or so in Canada. And the, the medium projection, uh, which I think is the one shown here, is assuming that fertility in terms of births per woman would stay stable at about uh, 1.6 to 1.7. Uh, what is happening with that is that depending on the number of women, uh, there is a different number of births, of course, with the same fertility rate. Uh, so uh, with women being older and beyond the age of reproduction, uh, you have uh, um, less births. And so that is partly uh, contained in the age structure. And, can, and tell us, if you would, if we're at 1.6, 1.7 births per woman, how does that compare to other countries around the world? Well, there, there is a, a number of countries that have lower fertility than Canada, uh, like uh, Spain, Russia. There are some that are in the range of uh, 1.2. Uh, there, there is a, a number that are close to Canada, or maybe a bit slightly higher, like France or, or United States, 1.8 to 2.0. Uh, there, it used to be that uh, there was a number of uh, less developed countries whose fertility was in the range of uh, six or seven births per woman. But now the highest fertility is in Africa, and uh, there it would be more like uh, three to four births per woman. But I gather you need 2.1 to replace your population, and we're a long way from that. So if we want to keep the population where it is or higher, I presume we're talking immigration, yes? Right. Uh, well, it's interesting that it takes a long time for uh, below replacement fertility, as we call it, to turn into negative natural increase, that is, where there's more deaths than births. Uh, so that we first had uh, fertility below 2.1, which is kind of the replacement level, uh, in, uh, two, uh, in 1974. And it won't be until uh, 2036 that we'll start having more deaths than births. And that's even in the low uh, fertility assumption. Uh, in the medium or high fertility assumption, which are not that high, 1.6 and 1.8, uh, we are still seeing more deaths, more births than deaths 
even until the end of the projection period in 2060. Hmm. Why do you think uh, fewer people are having kids today? Well, uh, I, I think, again, I think it's fairly, it's fairly constant. Uh, as you say, there are, there are sometimes fewer people at ages to have children, but uh, there, uh, a number of things have brought us to have lower fertility. Uh, one is uh, basically a going for quality rather than quantity, and, so, and, a, and a concentration at, at having two children, uh, which is seen to be uh, a good number. You have uh, at least more than one, and, uh, and you don't have too many by having two. I asked uh, people some years ago, uh, what do you think of, uh, of having two children? What do you think of having three children? What do you think of having no children uh, or one child? And, and uh, a number of people uh, said that uh, having no children was, w was not the best. Uh, you, you're missing something in life uh, if you have no children. But they also said that uh, if you don't want children, you really shouldn't have children. And so it was best uh, not to have children if that's what you wanted. Hmm. Uh, uh, they, they thought that one child wasn't the best because uh, the child would be kind of alone. It wouldn't have a brother or sister to interact with. Uh, but they thought two children was good because they, they at least had uh, two siblings. Uh, three or more was sometimes seen to be uh, hard to manage, uh, hard to uh, be able to balance all the things that you have to do in life with, that, with even three children or four or more. Well, let's compare so, next door, if we can. Uh, we're in Ontario. Quebec is right next door. Quebec has a higher birth rate than Ontario. I note that uh, a decade or two ago, the Quebec government came out with a policy to actually increase the payments to women who had children. Can you draw a straight line between higher payments to have kids and people actually having more kids? No, th this is a very complicated matter uh, on, on which there's fairly good uh, consensus on two things, I would say. One is that uh, a kind of direct payments for having children doesn't work. That is, you can't buy children in that way. But the second thing is that uh, if you are uh, able to put a, into place a policies wherein there's flexibility around family matters and where uh, you support children, people who have children, especially through parental leave and child care, uh, then you are able to uh, support those people who want children uh, to be able to also work and to uh, have a, a, a more balanced life, to pay some of the costs of children through child care. And that is, in a number of countries, being considered now to have helped us to avoid particularly low fertility, fertility in the range of 1.2, 1.4, uh, more fertility in the range of 1.6, 1.7, uh, that we see in countries like France, like uh, the Nordic countries hmm. of Sweden and Norway, Denmark, and also in Canada and Quebec has uh, a fertility more like 1.7 compared to Ontario's 1.5. Do you think policymakers and governments spend enough time thinking of ways to get people to have more children? Right, I think that, uh, that, that policy should uh, support people who, who want to have children, to have the children that, that they want to have, not necessarily to have more. But um, uh, I, I think that we don't pay that much attention to it uh, outside of Quebec. I think that uh, in Quebec they do. They have uh, mi ministries associated with family, and they've thought very carefully about their f population questions. Uh, they've thought very carefully that they shouldn't give the money directly in terms of money, but they should convert it into a cheap uh, child care program, and that they should introduce more flexibility in their parental leave programs and, and push men to take uh, some of the parental leave uh, in, in, through, the, through the policies that they've put in, more options in, in how you take parental leave, uh, when you take it, and. Uh, and the kind of uh, how long you take it vis-a-vis vis -vis how, how much benefit it gives you. So th these kinds of flexibility, uh, also with encouraging uh, the view that uh, children need not be born in a marriage, that they can be born uh, to people who are cohabiting, uh, and that uh, uh, to, to be open to various types of relationships, in term, in, including gay and lesbian uh, relationships, and, and, and children in those relationships. Let's finish All up this, on this. All this, I think, has contributed to Quebec's uh, 
uh, more, more uh, higher fertility rate uh, by, by paying policy attention to these questions. Sure. Let, let's finish up on this notion. You know, there are some people out there who believe that we have an obligation to increase the population, to perpetuate the species, that we should have kids. Do you feel that way? Well, those are very interesting questions. I think that, uh, of course, we, we do need to have some children. Uh, the, there needs to be, uh, for the population to continue, uh, some children need to be born. And it, it makes sense that uh, that, that, that is a, not just a decision that, that involves oneself, it, it affects others. And so it, it makes sense that, that others get involved in those decisions and, and push us one way or the other. I think that uh, when we have too many children, people say, well, what are you thinking about? You're having too many there. It's not going to work. Uh, when we have uh, too few children, especially, I think, potential grandparents become concerned that they, they won't have the pleasure of grandchildren around them. I, I, was, uh, I, I like to use the example that when I was uh, uh, expecting my, fourth, my third child, I was uh, at uh, a place uh, to have a drink with uh, people from my department. And I told, said this to the people there that uh, we were expecting a third child. And my uh, then chair of the department said, are you, are you having any more? As if to <laughs> say, surely you know three is enough. So I, I think that we all uh, experience uh, and, and push each other in those ways. So uh, to answer your question more directly, I, I think that we, sh uh, we should support people who have, who have children and that uh, somewhere in the order of a uh, fertility rate of 1.7, 1.8 is good for Canadian society. Uh, but at the same time, we, we, we probably need to have some people having no children because there's some who have three or more. And so to compensate for those and for those who have no children or one child, uh, it's important to remember that there's various ways to reproduce ourselves. It need not be biological reproduction. Uh, they, uh, there's various ways to be generative and to be supporting of the next generations. And, and people without children can do that very well as well. Have you come to any conclusions as a result of your research as to what the ideal number of children any family, and define family how you want, any family should have? <laughs> the ideal, well, we, that's a question that we ask uh, in demography, and, uh, and of course demographers have their own view on that. Uh, my own sense is that two is a very good number. Uh, it's, uh, it, it makes for the potential for interaction. You didn't take your own children. advice, Professor Bojo. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so there is that. Um, uh, three is good because it makes for a lot more interaction because there's, there's three of them there. Uh, but uh, if all of us had three children, uh, I think we would uh, have a, a problem in this world, uh, which is that we, we need the population to come to a stable point. Uh, and Canada needs to play a role in that. Uh, uh, the UN has for many uh, decades concluded that the sooner we arrive at a stable population for the world, the more we will be able to live within the confines uh, uh, ecology of this planet. Understood. Roderick Bojo, Professor Emeritus, Sociology, Western University. It's good of you to join us on TVO tonight. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.